December 14th, 2009, Mountain View, California. It was just another day at the office, inside Google's headquarters. The pace was slow, as employees prepared for upcoming holidays. A cybersecurity employee at Google was checking his computer, and everything seemed business as usual. However, he noticed an unusual amount of data going to an external IP address, and this immediately raised a lot of red flags. For months, the advanced cyber attack had silently infiltrated Google, and by the time the first red flags appeared, it was too late. The hackers had already slipped past defenses, exploiting vulnerabilities and siphoning away data. What made it even more terrifying, the attack has been happening for so long, completely unnoticed. And it all came down to one simple inconspicuous imaging. In mid-2009, a group of hackers targeted Google's employees, uncovering their email addresses to create the perfect phishing email, and this is how they did it. We have, for example, an employee, let's call him Jason, and his co-worker, let's call him Michael. Michael received an email from Jason about work-related stuff, but what he didn't know is that the email was not from Jason, because it was sent by the hackers. This worked since the hackers identified friends and acquaintances and gained access to their contacts' emails. They then analyzed email exchanges to understand patterns. This helped them to make their malicious messages look indistinguishable from the real ones. Unbeknownst to Michael, the link led to a seemingly harmless website, but beneath the surface, it was riddled with malware. Since no security alerts were triggered, employees had no reason to suspect anything. But this is where the true deception began. This attack had silently infiltrated Google's systems, bypassing security and stealing data for months before being detected. Quickly, Google's security team gathered for an urgent meeting. They came up with a radical solution to identify the hackers. They gradually started to expand the circle of search, checking every computer on the campus. But they went even further. In the evening, they scrapped hard drives from employees' computers in order to check every single one. Later, Google's security team launched an urgent investigation, working with cybersecurity experts all over the world to trace the malware's origin and assess the damage. But more importantly, understand how an attack of this magnitude happened and how it went unnoticed for the longest time. After weeks of research and reverse engineering, deep within the malicious code, researchers found a file path containing the word Aurora, a cryptic clue likely left behind by the attackers. This would give the operation the infamous name Operation Aurora. It is unclear whether the attackers deliberately left Aurora in the code, or if it was an internal code name that researchers stumbled upon. From this moment on, every major tech company had to rethink its defenses. One thing, however, remains a mystery. Who is the operator behind this Aurora malware? And what was their motive? And was there any specific reason behind stealing data? Most importantly, how did they manage to go through Google's security and remain unnoticed? This Trojan created an encrypted tunnel, giving hackers direct access to the compromised machine. From there, it spread, reaching the wider Google network. In mere seconds, a single click had unknowingly opened a backdoor between Google's security systems and the attackers. The hackers planted a parasite within Google's network, disguising it as regular traffic, but later, the full scale of the attack became evident. During the Christmas season, as the investigation unfolded, it became clear this wasn't just about Google. The attack was much larger in scale, targeting major companies like Adobe Systems, Yahoo, Morgan Stanley, and several others across the commercial and financial sectors. The breach was first uncovered through traffic monitoring, when Google's security team noticed an unusual spike in encrypted traffic. The volume was much higher than normal, and worse yet, it was being sent to an unknown external IP address. Realizing the gravity of the situation, 
Google called for reinforcements. Cybersecurity experts from Google offices across the US and around the world were pulled in. Many were forced to cancel their holiday plans to report to the headquarters. But even with their combined expertise, they needed outside help. Google enlisted top external cybersecurity firms, including McAfee. Dmitry Alpirovich, then the president of the threat research at McAfee, gladly accepted the challenge, leading this team in a forensic investigation to turn over the hackers and put an end to the breach. The team at Google went into lockdown for weeks, cutting off all outside communication and barring any outsiders from stepping in. They operated in complete secrecy for weeks, determined to prevent any leaks about their efforts to contain the malware. As their investigation progressed, they uncovered the hacker's methods. The attack has exploited an undiscovered vulnerability in Internet Explorer 6, or what's known as Zero-Day Exploit. Logs revealed that the hackers had accessed Google's source code repositories and attempted to breach specific Gmail accounts. These accounts belonged to Chinese human rights activists who had been subject to legal scrutiny. The implications were chilling, and suspicion quickly turned toward China. The evidence suggested the possibility of a state-sponsored hack, but the activists weren't the only targets. The hackers also went after Google's most valuable asset, its source code. If stolen, it could be reverse-engineered to create similar platforms, or it can be exploited for weaknesses. McAfee's forensic team uncovered something even more alarming. Google's source code wasn't well protected, and the attackers had already bypassed its defenses using an unknown strain of malware, and some of the code had already been stolen. Google's immediate response was to identify and isolate infected systems, disconnecting compromised machines to prevent further data theft. They strengthened network monitoring and intrusion detection to spot any suspicious activity. Gmail security was overhauled, and HTTPS encryption became the default. And additional protections like two-factor authentication were introduced. The attack became a tipping point in Google's already strained relationship with China. For years, Google had faced challenges from censorship and human rights concerns to difficulties gaining a foothold in the Chinese market due to state-imposed restrictions. While this attack wasn't the sole reason, it was the final straw. So in January 2010, Google published a blog post titled A New Approach to China, signaling a major shift in its stance. Google moves its search operations from China to Hong Kong in March 2010, completely exiting the Chinese market to reduce its exposure to future cyber threats, especially from China. This attack was monumental. It reached a worldwide scale, to the point where Google sought help from other companies, which were also affected by this attack like Adobe and Intel, and even collaborated with US government agencies like the FBI and the NSA to continue investigating and preventing similar threats. Operation Aurora had far-reaching consequences for Google, cybersecurity practices, and US-China relations. While it served as a wake-up call for companies to strengthen their defenses, it also sent a clear message to hacking groups. Even the biggest corporations are vulnerable. The Underwood Group, the hackers behind this attack on Google, faded from sight after 2013. However, their tactics and influence remain evident in China. Rumors suggest that its members were reassigned to other Chinese cyber units, but their identities and exact whereabouts remain unknown.